Again, everybody, it's Scott Casper. We continue our coverage of the sport of wrestling. And this time we head up to the campus of Augsburg in Minnesota to talk to one of the best in the business. He joins us now. Does Jordan Holm. Jordan, how are you? Good. Good, Scott. Good. It's been a while since you and I talked, but uh, it's been a week since you've been down uh, in the sweatiness that is South Florida. Uh, you did quite well down there at 85 kilos. As a matter of fact, you beat Zach Nielsen and and uh, secured a, another spot on a world team. Uh, Ask the obvious question, I suppose. I suppose. How do you feel? Feel good. You know, as uh, a full season of working hard to get back there. You know, making it back to the world championships is. Uh, first step of accomplishing my goal for the year and that's to win a world championship so it went well down there and uh credit to zach for helping me you know train we both pushed each other i think we both saw big improvements this year in our in our uh, wrestling ability and uh yeah i mean it went well good tournament let's draw the picture let's step back a few if we can out of georgia to minnesota at Minnesota is where you're training, at the Minnesota Training Center, the campus of Augsburg, and you float around to a couple other gyms, Pinnacle, et cetera. But um, then you're also responsible, of course, to Colorado Springs, the home of USA Wrestling. Um, balancing your time, travel, and all of this has got to be difficult at best, but uh, managing your weight amongst all of it. You have so many different responsibilities, almost seemingly at the same time. Does this ever just kind of drive you nuts? Uh, I like having a full plate. You know, I like having things to do. I think that uh, it's it's hard for me. Um, you know, I get back from these from this uh, tournament down the world team trials, and we certainly push hard to peak for the world team trials or a big tournament like that. And I get back, and my coaches are usually hounding me to not come in and work so hard the next week. You know, uh, my tendency is to come in and start working out again on Monday. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm doing my lifting this week, and it's been hard for me to kind of stay off the mat and let some things heal up. And uh, it's one of the things I'm trying to focus on is really getting ready for the World Championships. you gotta, you got to allow yourself to heal. But generally, I'm go, 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 and I, I like that. You know what I mean? My, my responsibilities, I, I generally take on a lot, take on everything I can. I, <laughs> I like it. You know, it's part of it. Yeah, I, I think that that's something that uh, most people who know me would, would say is part of my part of my deal. It's been said that we could have no better soldier in that spot, in that weight, than Jordan Holm. How do you feel about what the public is saying about you? Well, that's good. You know, I mean, I really appreciate that. I, I think that, uh, you know, my style of wrestling, I try to go out there and just, I like to think that I'm just going to go out there and, and uh, kind of break the guy and use just enough technique to get by. But mostly I want to. I want to. I want to crush you. I want to break your spirit. I want to mentally uh, beat you down and hopefully uh, score some technical points in, along the way. Uh, you know, so I mean, maybe people appreciate that. Um, I do think it's a you know technical street fight is something that my high school coach used to say a lot about wrestling, and uh, I try to bring that bring that approach. Uh, a lot of guys are very slick, and you look at all kinds of styles all all around the world. You know, I'm a big fan of watching film and watching tape and. I watch freestyle tape, I watch Greco tape, I watch collegiate tape, you know, and, and uh, I, I love looking at all the styles and how the guys approach different matches, and you could see the mental approach people take to the match. You could see the, you know, physicality and the technical, and I, I, and I think that my style kind of leans towards the physicality as opposed to uh, I'm going to out-slick you, you know, and... Uh, and so, you know, it bodes really well for Greco. You go out there, you just pummel, 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 and take it to guys. You know? Yeah, there are people that uh, you wrestle uh, on a fairly regular basis that understand that uh, I just wrestled Jordan home uh, because you are uh, known as a pummeler. You go in hard, and uh, you do want to crush your people. And I guess, you know, head coach uh, uh, Matt Lindland likes that attitude. He likes that's Matt every step of the way. He wants you to know that you just were defeated by Matt Linlin. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we do. We wrestle. We don't dance. This is wrestling. Uh, you did well at the Minnesota Storm Holiday Cup. The Dave Schultz Memorial took third at the Grandma Cup. Undefeated at the Pinto Cup. Uh, he had a tremendous outing, I think, in Florida uh, where you secured your spot on the world team uh, talk to us about being on the world team this time. Is it more special than anything you've done over the last two years? Um, my wife would probably wish I would mention our marriage or something like that as, as far as t total specialness of moments in my life, but over the last two years, but, uh, I would say, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
I'm really optimistic and really, uh, you know, thinking very positive about what's going to happen in September. And so I think I see this as a, you know, I'm opening up the door to winning a world championship. And so, yeah, I, I always trying to live in the moment and kind of remember, you know, what, what work has gone into being back on making it back to the world team. So yeah, I mean, it's a very special moment. I don't know that I could really point to, uh, this specific match as being the most special, but I do think that, um, you know, when I was considering wrestling or not again after the 2012 trials, you know, I mean, uh, see if we could make it work here in Minnesota. If I could train with Chandler and Paulson, if I was going to get training partners to come here and we're going to be able to make this thing work again, kind of revive the training center. I think that, uh, you know, I look back at, at the experience as a whole and how it's gone the last couple of years, and I'm just super thankful. You know, I think that uh, it's it's just been an awesome experience, and I'm very thankful to be back. And, and it's gone in the direction that I've I've hoped and prayed for and uh, to the level that, you know, I knew that I could get to is that, you know, being on the world teams and representing the U.S. at the world championships and these next two years are going to go super quick. I mean, world championships are going to come up here real soon. And then we got Vegas and Rio. And I mean, it's going to go by quick and trying to focus on getting better because I don't feel like I've arrived. You know, you don't arrive from making the world team. Uh, I think nothing was a better reminder of that than last year's world team down in Stillwater, you know, winning the, winning the world team trials for anybody who's confused as to whether or not that's an accomplishment. You can walk right across the hall, you walk right across the parking lot to the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. You can walk through there and you feel like you haven't done anything <laughs> until you walk, you walk through there and you see all these guys like Olympic medalists, gold medalists, silver medalists, world champ, you know, every one of these dudes has done something. And here you are, you know, if you're patting yourself on the back for making a world team, get in line. I mean, you got a thousand people in front of you. And yeah, it's a very special thing to be number one in the U.S. at a weight class and be able to go to the world championships. It's a, it's an accomplishment. I'm not, but I'm not confused in thinking that it's any of us have arrived. Um, there's guys who've make who've make uh, make several world teams, and there's guys who make one and medal. And uh, I mean, you know, I hope to be the guy who medals. You know, I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, Spencer Mango. I mean, seven Olympic and world teams straight in a row, uh, you know, just dominated the weight class, unlike any other, anyone else in the U.S. Um, in terms of consistency and performing at that level. But, you know, you have conversations with them when we travel overseas, and this guy was just, just splitting hairs away from getting a bronze medal last year at the world championships. And you could just, you could see how bad he wants it. And, you know, he, he's fighting for everything he's got to make a, to win a medal. And, uh, as much as people might say, oh, you know, Spencer's never medal. He's never medal. But, man, is he fighting hard. And to combine that weight class this year, I see it as a comp combining the weight class between 55 and 60 to make it 59. But, uh, man, you know, he's seven in a row, and he's I think he's on his way to being a medalist. You know, I really do. But uh, would he would he give up six of them to have a medal in one of them? I think he would. I, th I, think, that's, I think that's the way most people see it. And so uh, – you know, again, just making a world team is an accomplishment, but none of us think we've arrived because we made a world team. I, I really think that it comes down to are, how are you going to perform on the day of competition at the World Championships or the Olympics? Now, Gable so, was asked that, uh, do you feel as if you've arrived? And he says, arrived? He says, hell, I just got here. <laughs> you know, I thought, you know what, that's maybe the most honest and telling of an answer. We're talking with Jordan Holm, world team member. Uh, and, and here's the schedule. Uh, he's at Minnesota right now at the Minnesota Training uh, Center. Um, you have camp for the next week and a half? Uh, I think it's two-week camp out at the Olympic Training Center, okay. Colorado Springs. All right, so out to Colorado Springs, change in elevation there out to the uh, United States Training Center at uh, Colorado Springs. And then it's off to the Pan Ams in Mexico City. What kind of uh, What's that schedule look like? Is it a week and a half to two weeks down there? I think it's going to be pretty quick. I think we leave on the 12th and compete on the 16th and come right back. You know, wow. Mexico City is not too far away, but, uh, you know, we need to win it. we got to, we got to win there. we got to uh, certainly one of the, you know, world medalists in my way from Cuba and, and uh, some other strong competition. Um, so we're going to just do our best. And then the eyes will be set on Tashkent. Uh, Uzbekistan, but you're going to be flying in uh, in a rather circuitous route. You're going to be flying over to a different country, training there, and then dropping down into Uzbekistan. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, going to Kazakhstan. Everybody, yeah, it's uh, 
you know, t I think I think that's what we're doing. Uh, Momir said, "Be ready to be flexible," but that's what our tentative plan is. We're going to Kazakhstan, we'll be training there for two weeks, probably with their national team or maybe on our own, and then uh, drive down into Uzbekistan. I mean, just it's our acclimation camp. Really get used to the time change. I'm not sure what it is. I'm guessing it's like probably ten, ten or more hour time change difference. Uh, so I'll get used to that and uh, fine tune some things. Play a lot of basketball. Um, and uh, soccer, and then uh, work on all of our wrestling skills and get ready to go for the world championships. Are you better on the inside, inside the paint, or are you better? Are you an arc shooter? Oh, I'm a I'm a perimeter shooter. Yeah, I can, perimeter. But right I mean, right. if you want to get real physical underneath, I can. I think I can play bigger than my height shows, just because I'm gonna I'm gonna body you, I'm gonna box you out really well underneath. So I'm gonna get rebounds. Am I gonna lose a couple physical. teeth? Is that it? Am I gonna lose a couple teeth every time we play? Uh, if you do, I mean. You know, don't start flopping on me because I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be worried about picking you up. <laughs> so, no, I, I don't know. I, I really like playing just about any sport there is. You know, I love Best playing thing. basketball, I love playing football, I love playing tennis, pickleball, anything, ping pong. I'll pick up a paddle and I'll compete with you on it, and uh, and I really enjoy those kind of things. So yeah, but but really, my dad's dream was for all of us to play basketball. Really? I have four brothers. There's five five boys. My little sister, and. Uh, you know, we had a basketball court in our, uh, you know, in our yard growing up, and uh, yeah, I, I really think that uh, if uh, if we had a tiebreak scenario where we played a game of horse, uh, you know, that would that would pretty much fall in my favor. Who do, you know, I dated a former, uh, well, the daughter of a former NF, uh, NBA great uh, up in Minnesota when I was going to school there, George Mikan's daughter. I dated Trish. And, and George was the king of the bring it, man. He just went, took that ball to the hole. He scored and uh, ended up being in a big time insurance guy up there. But um, were there any NBA players that you looked up to growing up say, hey, you know, I really like his game? Uh, I mean, I was growing up a Minnesota Twins fan, Timberwolves fan, Vikings fan, Lynx hockey, you know, a wild back when the North Stars were here before that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I used to just go out there and kind of broadcast my own game as I would five, four, you know, <laughs> pretend I was Pooh Richardson, which if unless you're an old-time Timberwolves fan, you're not going to remember who that guy is. But he was one of our first players when the Timberwolves became a franchise here in Minnesota. And I used to imagine being him. I'd imagine being all kinds of things. Everybody imagined being Michael Jordan, you know, yeah. growing up. But, yeah, you know, I, I would basically announce the, the Timberwolves roster as I was switching from down low or out outside and just kind of taking shots. Yeah, that's how I play. That's how I do it with the <laughs> my twin. My brothers and I would pitch to each other out in the yard, and we, you know, I could imitate all the the batting stances of everybody in the Twins lineup <laughs> when they won the World Series in '91, and I'd switch across the plate to be Kent Herbeck batting left-handed. Nice, and, you know, the whole deal. I mean, that, that's 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 how I was. So you've got to be in an awfully good place, uh, being coached by guys like Brandon Paulson, who has a. A very different dynamic in the room. Uh, I know how enthusiastic he can be. Um, does that? Does his enthusiasm, his bounce off the wall type energy, does that uh, uh, encourage you? Does that stir you up emotionally? Um, uh, I know he's a great technician, but what does Paulson bring to your plan and your strategy? Uh, Paulson brings. He does. He always has the energy. And I love it. I think the guys love it. It's a great change of pace to go from one room to the next. You know, a lot of times it's a refresher for a coach to just kind of have a different coach run a practice now and then. I think everybody draws from it. I mean, every one of us can kind of benefit from having a different a different coaching philosophy and to adapt and take what you can from each coach along your career. And uh, Paulson certainly, uh, you know, He's been a big benefit to me in a lot of ways. You know, we were just working the other day. We sat down and watched my World Cup matches, and he's kind of critiquing what it is that I need to think about this moment and this moment of the match and changing my position here and maybe locking in my underhook and this difference, using my lat. And, you know, he's a very solid technician when you really comes down to the fine-tuning and the details if you ask him the right questions and really got to get him talking on the finer points of the finer points of wrestling. It's just great to listen to. But if you're talking more broad and him coaching the whole room at once, Nobody does it like Paulson. It's just outstanding. I mean, we, we don't have adult practice. We don't have guys who are just kind of half halfway drilling over in the corner because they just Paul. It doesn't doesn't go over well in Paulson's room. You know, he has the energy that it just naturally you're going to get the best out of the guys throughout that practice. I think a lot of guys leave feeling like ah, oh, it was a good day. You know, we worked hard and it was fun. 
There's ultimately one guy who has faith in everything you do. He's been there since day one, and that's Coach Chandler. Um, His job is not necessarily to be your dad. His job is not to be your best friend. But, boy, I tell you what, when when it's right, it's right. And it seems that it's right between you two. Do you feel that? Yeah, I mean, you know... It is interesting. I don't really think about it a lot, but I mean, Chandler has been coaching me in Greco for so long, and it's it's been great. And I, I agree. You know, there is a there's there's a connection there that's uh, developed throughout the years. I you know I have a lot of respect for Chandler, and I really appreciate his style of coaching. I think he does a great job of drawing out the best in each athlete, and he does put a lot of faith in the athletes. He allows the athletes to develop their individual style, and he works with them on what it is that they're trying to get better at. And he comes over and he adds a little bit here, adds a little bit there. But he's not telling you you need to wrestle like like I did. You, you need to wrestle like this. Each guy has a different thing that he recognizes as their their style and their technical approach, and he's going to fine tune it and help them adjust it to that way. I mean, once you're on the senior level, hopefully something's worked for you to get you here. And uh, he understands that we're not going to change everybody's everybody's approach, but these are some things we need you to know. And he's going to you know fine tune them. But uh, Chandler, uh, you know, he can get he can get get going on the whistle and get yelling at us and, and get us going during the mat during practice. But a lot of times he's super chill and that, that, that seems to work for a lot of guys in the room. I mean, I think that, uh, it works for me. And, uh, but yeah, I've known Chandler since I was a high school kid driving up here to go to Minnesota USA wrestling's open practices at the U and, uh, you know, he, he coached me in my cadet national finals match. You know, he helped me coach me in, Cadet national champion, junior national champion. He coached me in all those matches. University national champion. He coached me in all those things all the way back to like mid nineties. And, uh, <laughs> and so it's just kind of, <clears throat> you know, it, 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 it is. I really appreciate the faith that he's putting me in a lot of ways. So there was a time when you were wrestling both freestyle and Greco, and and uh, might might I say a pretty decent freestyle wrestler. Why did you or how did you make the decision to to focus strictly on Greco? Yeah, I mean, that wasn't an easy decision for me. I, I love I love wrestling, period. Uh, you know, much like I said, if I you know if I walk by, past the ping pong table, hey, let's play. You want to play? Let's do this. This is fun. This is competition. And I think that the same thing applies to wrestling. You know, I, I, want, I always want to compete. I always want to wrestle. I want to wrestle in every tournament. And, and I, I feel like my coaches do a pretty good job of pulling me back and saying, hey, you know, you got to focus on the, the bigger picture. Uh, I was, I've always, I've always been like, just shy of entering the Midlands last year, the year before, and wanting to wanting to go to the freestyle trials and wanting to do these things, but uh, you know, I always got to remember the bigger picture, the longer vision of being an Olympic champion and focusing in on Greco. Um, but that wasn't an easy decision. Um, I love wrestling freestyle. I love wrestling, getting in the room with the college guys and wrestling folk style, and and uh, um, it's going to be fun. You know, this year I plan on wrestling with Schiller and Far and Crails over at the U quite a bit. And, Kind of seeing if I can bang with those guys and uh, was able to get in there. Um, leading up to the World Team Trials, I wrestled Greco Monday, Tuesday, Freestyle Wednesday, Greco Thursday, Friday. And uh, it just is fun for me. You know, it's a, it's a good mental, fresh, keeps me fresh, keeps me moving, helps me remember to kind of keep my feet moving, driving, moving my hands, and and just applying one thing to the next in the sport. And I think that, you know, it's a similar deal with uh, some of our freestyle guys. They train with us in Greco on Tuesdays. And, and uh they understand the benefits in, in getting the experience of both styles and both sports and really developing techniques in, in uh, every facet of the game of the sport. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, when I kind of got jumped back into wrestling, it was just kind of amazed that there was even an opportunity for me back in 2010. Um, you know, qualified for the trials in freestyle and in Greco. And, uh, you know, did better in freestyle than I did in Greco in that first trials. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, I'm very thankful to Jake Clark for choosing me as his training partner in 2010. We went to Moscow and uh, just hang around with the Greco guys and got a chance to watch the Greco World Championships and really just fell back in love with the sport. And uh, the opportunities that were presented, you know, doors were opening, and I was just grateful and decided to go with Greco, so... Well, we're all grateful that you did. The girls are, I know. I know that you've got a young lady in your life, but uh, uh, do, do you get a lot of notes and a lot of letters from girls, emails, text messages, and things like this? Is what uh, I'm, I'm I don't doing. know. I I don't know. I think we do uh, do okay in that area. My wife and I joke about it. Uh, you know, she was telling me just yesterday, she was 
she works for a media company and they were hosting a client and they went to the twins game and stuff. She was telling me she, she got hit on out at the whatever venue they were at and stuff. And she's like, yeah, but it doesn't seem to be as much as you get hit. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we joke about it, but I, <laughs> hey, to, very be happy fair, to be fair. And, 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 uh, I'm, I'm far enough away where you can, you'll cool off by the time, uh, the two of us see each other next. I mean, your wife's hot. She should, uh, you know, people should be <laughs> noticing her. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love my wife. I do think she's beautiful. <laughs> she is a gorgeous woman. Good job out of you. Thanks. What do you need to do to finish this out? What do I mean, I understand ultimately your goals in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro, but this world title seems to be something that's been elusive to you up to this point. Um, if I was to pick a guy, knowing how hard you work, who you're winning, uh, or who you're wrestling with, who you're beating, um, if I had to pick a guy, gosh, my, I would be, I would be hard to press to not choose you, uh, just based on what you've done to get to where you are. Uh, what do you do? What do you, what do you uh, feel you need to do to win in Uzbekistan? Um, you know, it's very small adjustments, um, in terms of, uh, what differences I need to, you know, how different I need to wrestle. Um, I've beaten, you know, been thankful to have beaten several world medalists in my career wrestling internationally on senior level. And, uh, um, knowing that I'm right there, um, lost a very close match at the world cup to last year's world bronze medalist. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of parity in the sport at the highest level. Uh, it's not as much as like baseball, where if you're a 500 team, you're good. Uh, but there's a lot of parity there, and it's who's going to be ready to go. You know, who's going to be ready to wrestle that day? Who's going to be the best in the world that day? And I believe that you know, I stand a very good chance to be the best in the world. You know, on September 12th. Um, I think that uh, you know, I lost to Finland last year. And at the World Cup, I tech the guy who tech that guy. I mean, it's just it's how it works. You know, it's, it's a technical aspect to the sport. You go out there, you just go for it, and you give it everything you got. And, um, but my coaches and I, you know, I talked with Lyndon for quite a while about some of the things that I'm going to be focusing on in these next three months, getting ready for the competition. And uh, it's some minor adjustments and some things we talked about that we haven't planned that we're planning out for what it is we're going to be focusing on certain areas. Uh, certain elements in all three facets, top, bottom, and on the feet. And um, I believe we're going to come up with a great game plan. Be ready to go. A lot of people don't know this, but our hair, yours the way it is, um, was the same way I wore mine back in 1978 when I first started broadcasting. Now, it happened to be in Minneapolis, and and uh, obviously uh, we did, did okay with the hair, but... Uh, you know, styles change for me over the years. They have. Uh, do you derive strength? This is an actual question I got from a wrestling fan. I bet he gets strength from his hair like Samson. Do you? Is that is that a psychological uh, thing for you? Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, I like I tell people when, when I'm done wrestling and I assume I'll be moving into a more, you know, serious job that uh, you know, I'll trim my hair. I, I for now, I get my hair cut plenty. My wife appreciates it. She's the one who insists I don't cut it back to the end. What my dad would appreciate is always a military-style haircut. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I think most of my life, I always had it kept short. And I think I grew it out. And I was like, wow. Oh, I, like, I guess I'll, I kind of like it. I'll leave it like this. <laughs> Jordan, you don't get a chance to thank people in your life, coaches, family, uh, sponsors, whoever. Um uh, uh, too often. Who would you like to thank? You have an open forum here. Oh man, it's such a list of people. I mean, I thank my, you know, my family, my brothers and sister, my mom, and my dad. Uh, but uh, you know, I guess beyond that, I like to thank Gopher Wrestling Club, people who are sponsoring the Minnesota Training Center, and uh, you know, just the people who've had faith in me and given me opportunities that I've had. You know, been on several trips. Uh, I don't even know how many countries I've been to over the last few years. It's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun and uh, just super grateful, um, you know. So hope to represent them well, make them make them proud. 
You know what? I think uh, you do that every time you step on the mat. Absolutely. Win or lose. But we're looking forward to seeing your hand raised and climbing the top of the box at 85 at the Worlds. And uh, grab yourself up the medal you so richly deserve. Out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, wrestling for the Minnesota Storm and Team USA. He's uh, number one in the United States and one of the top-ranked wrestlers in the world at his weight, as he should be, at 85 kilos. He's Jordan Holm, and he's been our very special guest today. Jordan, thank you. Uh, Best interview I've done all day. Thanks, Scott. Best interview I've done all day. I'm going to do another one, and it could easily uh, not even come close to the interview I just did with you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> tell, tell you what, but we wish the bell f- uh, best for you, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Have fun in Colorado. All right, we will. Okay, buddy. Good job.